Sir, you were one of the few practitioners of uh, this school of thought as a, as a teacher, as a professor, as an influencer, as a social leader um, of equality for women. And uh, somehow globally, but especially in India, there men are lacking in this uh, movement. Time magazine even wanted to ban this word. Men shy away from this word. What, what do you think is the reason for it? Like, this, yeah, that's, I think, because feminism yeah, has been interpreted in different ways. Um, in certainly in some parts of the West, it's had a very aggressive edge to it, and uh, you know, in, in, so so many people shy away from you know sort of a, the pure ideological approach, and um, uh, you know, none of us want to you know bear the burden for historical inequities or uh, the fact that we belong to a particular gender does not automatically imply that uh, you know we are guilt-ridden or something like that. We are here to work together you know, to create a new world yeah, with, um, you know, where, where feminist ideals are enshrined yeah, as a matter of course. And for that to work, we need to be seen as legitimate in this discourse as well, in this domain as well. And that, uh, some, if, if um, uh, some more extreme viewpoints argue that you can't, um, you know, be legitimate if you're a man, then we sort of lose out on a chance to participate. But there's another factor, and that factor has to do with the difficulties of being a feminist in every aspect of one's life. We, you know, are, we are all imperfect. You know, um, if you look at our own family settings, um, we may find that, in my case, my wife has made more sacrifices to allow me to pursue my political career. And, um, you know, so, so yeah, yeah, you know, maybe it should have been the other way around. To, I should have made the sacrifice to let her pursue her architecture career. And, you know, since I haven't done that and I've been the one who has benefited from her kindness, uh, her generosity, um, in some ways I would shy away from, you know, waving the flag and saying, I am a true feminist. No, no, no. I, I, you know, I'm also, it's, it's complicated, is all I can say. And, uh, but I'd like to move towards more, um, you know, equitable distribution of responsibilities, sacrifices and um, everything else. However, um, I would say that uh, throughout my, um, you know, my life I've made sure that, you know, if she, um, you know, there's a tendency to say that whatever belongs to her also belongs to me. And I always say, what belongs to me belongs to me. What belongs to her belongs to her. Our children are our joint, uh, you know, property in some sense. And uh, she's also quite happy to ensure, to, to be assured that I have no eyes on whatever she owns or whatever property she has. That, uh, you know, that's just uh, uh, something that other people find a little hard to deal with. Um, the fact that she maintains her own maiden name uh, is surprising to people as well. None of these things are, uh, you know, are a matter of any kind of concern. I'm very, very supportive. So, but. It's a complicated world. It can't be perfect. So I don't want to claim any, put any labels on my actions. It is a direction. It is a commitment. And I'd like to go further in that direction rather than, um, you know, basically take any credit or anything like that along the way.